Hi, I'm Judy Friedman, and I'm chairperson of PACE, People's Action for Clean Energy. And we are the largest nonprofit, all volunteer clean energy in the state of Connecticut. And by clean, I mean squeaky clean. We believe in solar uh, power, the various kinds of solar technologies. We believe very much in wind and in geothermal, all those technologies that don't uh, emit pollution do not hurt people's health. We are very concerned about nuclear power in this state, very concerned about the air pollution, especially that we have in the summer, very concerned about fracking. We don't think fracking waste belongs in Connecticut. Uh, and today I'm here because I'm really excited. I'm excited about a house uh, because it represents an idea that is replicable that is not beyond the reach of many, many citizens in this state. And I'm excited about this house because this wonderful couple, Steve and Laurel Schwartz, in Plainville, Connecticut, who live in a 1960 ranch house, have converted their home, retrofitted their home, to be a net zero energy home. Now that is just astounding. 1960 means all sorts of things as far as insulation goes and types of heating. So uh, Laurel, in just a few words, can you tell me exactly what you did to make your 1960 ranch house a net zero home? We removed oil. You removed oil. You removed oil tanks? Oil, two oil, 250 gallon oil tanks. You took out your 250 oil tanks. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Connecticut Burr. Yeah. And we um, changed to solar thermal and solar PV, which is solar electric. We have 50 solar electric panels on our roof plus two solar thermal panels. We added a heat pump and what else do we add? I think that was it. It was more than enough. And we, and we put um, central air and central heating in our home. We were originally baseboard heating. And you did that with another technology that you didn't mention, I think, is the heat pump, the air heat, source. Yes, the heat pump. Heat pump. Well, this is just so exciting. So the, this couple, 1960 Ranch House, removed their oil tanks and changed their whole energy picture. They uh, now do not have a fuel bill, correct, for no oil, oil. No oil bill. And you do not have an electric bill except for the $16 a month transition charge because of the changes you made. And then, um, so uh, just briefly, how in the world, I mean, you each have a job, that's right, but I don't think you have a pot of gold in the basement. How in the world did you manage to make these tremendous changes to your home? We simply refinanced our home. We used the equity in our home to really pay ourselves in a way. When you remove the oil bill and the electricity bill, there's now extra money. In our case, $500 a month extra in our family income now. And we are using that to pay down our um, home equity mortgage and pay it down faster. So in seven to 10 years, I think is what you yeah. mentioned, mm -hmm. what will your situation be? Mortgage free, electricity bill free, oil bill free, we'll have heat, air conditioning, and a home. And I think in a prior discussion, we did, even you even are able to use a room that you hadn't used before because mm -hmm. now you're able to heat and cool it in a comfortable way. If we had a 20 by 30 room and it was very expensive to heat. It was on a second zone. So I just made, sewed up a curtain and put it on a shower curtain rod. We just covered the doorway and um, we never used that room in the summer or the winter. It was just too expensive. So this is just an amazing story. And the thing I like about this, as I said, it's replicable. Other people can do this. and. Uh, Laurel was very, very good about researching an energized CT website, uh, different installers, and she had the good fortune of meeting Walter Erickson from Ross Solar Group and Climate Partners. And Walter, you came into their kitchen and said, hey, 
don't just do the solar electricity, do what? What did you tell them to do? First thing we do is we sit down and we actually listen to what their, not only what their needs are, but what their pains are. You know, is the house comfortable? Is it giving them everything they want to? Do they have central air? Are they using their entire house the way they'd like to? Because a lot of what we do revolves around quality of life as well. You know, the savings is awesome. It's amazing. Getting rid of the fossil fuel is awesome. But if you have a house you're not comfortable living <laughs> right. in, it, none of it means anything. Right. So we look at how do we affect their overall budget? How do we get it financed? How do we improve the quality of life? Okay, so you're a, a man who comes from a solar installation company. So you Correct. advise them on photovoltaic, solar electricity, and, and now let's just stick with that for one minute. Sure. With the solar electricity, I think in this particular setup, you have what are called micro-inverters, is that correct? That's correct. Uh -huh. in, in the picture you're looking at there, each individual panel has its own micro-inverter. This allows for optimization of the most amount of power being produced from each individual panel. So that's good. So if a tree would shade a panel at a certain time of day, the whole system wouldn't shut down. Is that the that, idea? That's correct. You only lose the, the production from that one particular panel, and we can set it up in such a fashion where you really end up optimizing year-round the amount of power you're going to produce from the system itself. Uh -huh. Is my, are micro-inverters and solar panels a new idea, a relatively new idea? No, micro-inverters have been around for a little over a decade. There's, there's several different options. There's micro-inverters, there's optimizers, which act similar to micro-inverters. And then even the new string inverters now have something called multi-point power tracking, which gives a similar effect with uh, fewer points of failure. So they're really technology with inverters are, is quite advanced compared to what it was about a decade ago. So how are there, uh, uh, in uh, Laurel and Steve's basement, there are different um, ways to show what the f electric system is doing, uh, recording, is that correct? It is. The, the best way to actually check what the system's doing is to really view it online. They have a portal they can log into on the Enphase website where it'll show what their production is. It'll okay, show... Okay, let's, let's go slow now. Sure. Enphase website is something people should look at? And it's not necessarily until you have... We, we can actually refer folks to live systems so they can view what's going on. In the, Wenf, in the Enphase portal, you can actually view your entire system. You have two different levels of monitoring. You can do either system level or you can do panel level monitoring. Okay, spell M phase, E M P H A S E. A S E. Correct, M phase. Uh huh, uh -huh. wonderful. Um, so you have micro inverters uh, with your solar, they're underneath the solar panels, right? Correct, they're both bolted right to the racking. So then you're, you're on your roof, you're just going to see the long black, beautiful solar panels. Okay, now, not in, in addition to the solar photovoltaics, the solar electricity, they also have solar thermal, correct? That's correct. Uh -huh. And the solar thermal system is a series of panels also? Correct. There are two additional panels that actually tie to the Dakin Altherma heat pump system they have. Mm -hmm. they, is it Dakin? Is that how you say it? Dakin is... D-A-I-K-I-N? Correct. And that's the company that makes the heat pumps and... It makes the heat pumps, they make the tank, the panels, they make the entire system. They've taken the best of all their technologies, married them together, and we then have the ability to use all these technologies for distribution for heat, for cooling, and for domestic water heating. Wonderful. Um, I'm, I, I, it's just amazing. So can uh, Laurel and Steve see what their solar thermal is doing with their technology? There is a, there is a monitoring, monitoring device in the basement right near the tank, and it'll tell them when the pump is on, what the temperature is inside the pump, what the temperature is at the panels coming through the line. It, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty advanced. The picture you're looking at now, I believe, was taken during the winter, and it's showing 141 degrees at the panel. So that's it just gives you an idea. You know, thermal solar does. It was work. 141 degrees in the winter yeah. in it Connecticut. It was a 37 degree day, I believe, or 38 uh, degrees. Yeah. At, 
And the temperature of the panels was 141.9. And this is from the sun's warmth mm -hmm. in Connecticut on solar thermal panels in Plainville on your house. Yes. And we only need it to get to 137 degrees to, to start working. And that happens. As long as it's not covered in snow, we're good. It, I think some people feel that uh, installing a solar thermal system, if you're going to do one thing with solar, that that is a, even a faster payback than the solar PV. Is that true or not? No, it's about the same. It it's is. about equal, uh, especially with the incentives now for solar PV. Solar PV actually has a little quicker payback. The thing that makes solar thermal a huge benefit is what the cost of oil is in Connecticut. Right now we're you know, between 389 and 405 a gallon for oil depending on who you're buying from. So that helps speed the payback up you know, pretty quickly. Wonderful. And um, okay, now we we're talking about solar photovoltaic, solar electricity, we're talking about solar thermal, and now we're talking about something that most people don't understand, which is very hard to understand, heat pumps. What in the world is a heat pump? A heat pump essentially is your air conditioning running in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> your, your air con it's exactly the way Steve described it before. Your air conditioning extracts the heat out of your house and dumps the heat outside during the summertime. A heat pump extracts the energy out of the air in the wintertime and even down at temperatures close to 10 degrees, these heat, the Dakin heat pumps work extremely well. Most heat pumps bottom out at about 20 degrees and then you need auxiliary heat to, to kick in and help make up the difference. Still worthwhile, but it's not quite as good. The Dakins work extremely well at very, very low temperatures. Okay, so you're telling me that in the winter, the heat pump can take heat out of the outside air and help heat your house? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it I works. Know, I know it works. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's very exciting. So, in a case, you've done the solar, this wonderful solar PV, wonderful solar thermal, and the heat pump, and they're blended together. Now, I think, and unlike many solar installers, you also advise, advise them about insulation. Absolutely. One of the most important things you can do in any conservation project or any energy campaign is to look at how the house is actually functioning first. If you don't take care of the core of the house and you don't tighten it up, all the renewable energy in the world isn't going to help. You need to take a look at how much air is leaking in and out of the house. Tighten that up. Then you need to take a look at how well the house is insulated and if it needs it, add additional insulation. With Laurel and Steve, a little bit of air sealing, a little bit of insulation went a long way. The house is more comfortable. They're going to use less power as far as what they're creating. And it's going to allow a better quality of life because that one big family room that they never used before, they can use now. So this is, uh, you know, it's... So when they came to do the insulation, what did they do in your house? They went up into, we have a large attic that runs the entire length of the house. And they went and they did blown cellulose at 18 inches, which was an R, R value. R49, I believe. Um, and so then they capped our attic stairs. We had a pull down stair. It was like having a big hole in your ceiling where all the heat went up. And so they capped that to um, prevent heat loss and air exchange. And so th what was interesting is we had an electricity bill and it said that we were using 124 kilowatts a day. This is when the solar panels were covered in snow and it was it was a little scary to look at that bill. And the very day that the billing cycle ended for the electricity, we happened to have the insulation installed. <laughs> the very next bill, the temperature hadn't changed very much from month to month. We had cut our electricity usage by 66%, all by putting in the attic insulation and sealing that opening. That's wonderful, just wonderful. Um, Walter, we just heard in a conversation between us another idea that I'd never heard of before. Uh, houses have notoriously leaky places like chimneys. Correct. And uh, you just told us about the most fabulous idea I've ever heard of. If you have a chimney in your house, uh, a fireplace with a chimney, and even if you have a damper, it's like having a hole in your roof and the warm air just rises 
in the winter time when you're trying to heat your house. So what is this uh, wonderful idea about stopping leaking from your chimney? There's a relatively inexpensive product. It's like a balloon that inflates just above your damper. It's got a long extension rod. You can blow it up with a bike pump or an inflatable, any sort of air mattress inflatable pump, and it expands to fill up your flue just above your damper. It gives you a positive air seal. Your chimney is the largest hole in your house, and if you can stop the air from going up through that in the wintertime and the summertime, especially if it's something you really don't use that often, it's going to make an enormous difference with how much energy is going to be drawn into your house. You know, fireplaces are nice, but they're not designed for heating. They're designed really for more for aesthetics than anything else. They just draw cold air into the house. And so what if I forget I have a neoprene balloon in my chimney and I go and make a fire? Well, oh, what would happen? Oh, actually, there's a long rod that extends and hangs down into the firebox, so it reminds you there's something there. There's a tag on the bottom. <laughs> so it's something that you're, it's, it's not likely you would it, And what if I there. want to have a fire or want to sell my house and someone wants to have a viable chimney? All they do is unscrew the cap, let the air come out, pull the balloon out. You could use your fireplace whenever you want. You just reinflate it and put it back in place. Well, is there a, a, a product name that people could Google? There's several different ones. Um, if you just uh, Google um, flu balloons or fireplace flu balloons, they'll probably find what they're looking for. They're not too expensive. They range in price from 39 to $89. They're, they're really not that expensive. Wonderful idea. Thank you so much for, no the, for that. Great. Um, I've been so fascinated talking with both of you and uh, uh, want to review again the finances behind your wonderful uh, home. Uh, you were spending four thousand dollars on oil, correct, and sixteen hundred dollars on electricity, mm -hmm. and now that is completely gone because of this technology. Yes, it's it, really exciting. It's exciting, <laughs> and uh, and you feel that what is the future? involved in your financing of your house as far as your mortgage goes? We refinanced our home for 15 years by taking the money we would have spent on electricity and oil and prepaying down the new mortgage. We could be done with our mortgage um, and be mortgage and utility bill free in as little as seven years, depending on how disciplined we are and whether or not we want to take some of the money and put that toward college expenses because that's always an option, is now we have extra income and we have choices as opposed to we must pay the oil bill, we must pay CLMP. Now we can decide. Savings, pay down the mortgage, college textbooks. Wonderful. Um, and what kind of solar panels are on their roof? What is the company, the name of the company what, that deals at Ross Solar? likes and puts on, has put on their house? We use, at the Schwartz family, we used U.S. Solar. We actually represent uh, four different solar companies. Uh, SunPower, which is the number one brand in the United States. One of the very four systems is SunPower. U.S. Solar, which is an American product. LG and Fono are the four we recommend. That's because we wanted to try to find panels that we believe in the level of customer service the companies offer in the event that 15, 16 years from now, there's going to be service required or possibly required. We want to know the companies we're recommending are going to be there to support the clients and to support us. And why did you choose the panels <clears throat> that they have? We looked at what the Schwartz's personal needs, wants, and that we're drawn to really between two different companies. It was important to them that some of the U.S. manufacturing was uh, you know, important to maintain jobs here. U.S. Solar does have, uh, the majority of their production does take place here. Solar in general is a very global product nowadays, but we try to, you know, stick within what the best product is for the particular family. Not every family is U.S. Solar. It could be LG may be a better product for some families. You know, SunPar may be a better product for some families. In this situation, the U.S. solar panels, which are beautiful, they're all really nice looking nowadays. They're not, it's not like where there's solar used to be a scourge and people wanted to hide it. Solar is sexy now. It really, it really <laughs> solar is. is sexy. It is. That's a great program. <coughs> <laughs> I like it. So. You can't see those lines on the panels. You see them close up. From, from the street, you don't see them. All you see is a beautiful mirrored surface. Right. In you just see the reflection of the trees and the clouds. It's very attractive. Lovely. Just lovely. Well, you've done a great job 
with your home and with your life and uh, I think your family is very lucky that they that you've made this I think rather brave and certainly leadership step I, I, I can salute you as leaders uh, not only in solar technology and energy efficiency and finances but in the human health because we're having in this state terrible terrible pollution problems especially in the summer I mean we're one advises one children not to go outside and play because the air quality may be so poor and if we would just convert to these technologies we would have a lot better air to breathe and be a lot healthier maybe have less cancer we have the highest breast cancer rates in the whole country and I think this is a, a leadership step that you two have undertaken and I congratulate you and I also congratulate Ross Solar Group and Climate Partners for their wonderful ideas and now uh, your wonderful idea about a holistic look at energy not just saying oh we'll put panels here or we'll insulate that or we'll do solar hot water but the whole uh, range of technologies married beautifully together and with incentives and rebates and it's just uh, an amazing picture and it's a uh, very, very wonderful. So I, do you feel good about your role? I do. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that I have, it's very rare when you have an opportunity to affect people's lives in such a positive way. And, and that's part of what I love about doing. I, I met some great people and then, you know, developed a good relationship. You know, the fact that we have the ability to have strategic partners like climate partners, like Greystone, who did the installation in their ceiling. We have other strategic oh, the, partners. Okay, now that's a good one. We, we talked about Ross Solar Group and the installation. We talked about Dakin heat pumps. Correct. Now we're talking about the installation, and that was done by who? That was done by uh, Rob Jones with Greystone uh, Energy, Greystone Home Improvements out of the uh, East Hartford, Glastonbury area. They do insulation, they do windows, they do pretty much the conservation side of things. Uh, great guys, worked with them for a long time. They're neat, they're clean, they're reasonably priced, they're organized. And they and got everyone. I want the viewers to know that this is not an advertisement no, for any no, company. This no, is just you know what? what we're talking about is what works. Correct. And this house works. Right. And and the people are happy with it. They're saving money. They've gotten rid of their fuel bills. They're helping their children in the future, securing their life. You've uh, been working on uh, good projects, and it's just a a joy to to uh, be with you guys and share your enthusiasm for a better world because frankly I do believe that this is the path to peace right now uh, we're having terrible energy problems all over our country and from a global point of view and uh, I think a lot of the fighting in our world on our planet is about energy and should we move in the direction that you have I think we're also taking a step toward peace and I congratulate you because you are showing leadership and that this is possible even if you don't have a pot of gold in your basement. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no pot of gold. <laughs> so I am really take it off and, and thank Nutmeg Television for their wonderful um, embracing of this show because it's a very important educational medium medium for people to learn about what is possible to do with your house even if it's not a large house even if you're not don't have lots of income this is possible and done beautifully so thank you Laurel and Steve Schwartz and Walter Erickson for joining me on this very exciting adventure my pleasure thank you thank you